I don't know what's worse, blatantly and openly doing wrong or covering up our wrongdoings with religion. It's not a far stretch for me to relate with the two criminals that we are introduced to in Luke 23. One of the criminals speaks. He says this. He says, aren't you God? Save yourself and save us. Essentially, what this criminal hanging on a cross says to Jesus is, are you God? Aren't you, do you claim to be God? Prove it. Convince me. Win me over. This is what we do with God. Hey, if you're God, then, then, then prove it to me. If you're God, then why, why am I going through so much trouble? Maybe you blame God for the pain, and maybe you blame God for the hurt in your life. This is the age-old question. People have been asking it since the beginning of time, and this thief, just because he's a criminal, he's no different than this. He says, aren't you God? Prove it to me. Almost to say, almost like, aren't you God? Then why is this happening? Why are we hanging on a cross? Why are we? And this is the question that people have been asking for years. If there's a good God, and why do bad things happen? Aren't you God? You save me. As if God owes me. As if God owes me. Quite honestly, what, what have I ever done to merit God owing me anything? Aren't you really good? If you're good, prove it. I love that. Jesus doesn't respond to this man. If Jesus were to say something, maybe he would have said, that's what I'm doing, genius. <laughs> maybe not the sarcasm that I have, but yeah. It's exactly what I'm doing, is, is saving you. Then the other criminal speaks up. He says, he says, are you crazy? You're hanging on the same cross. And then he says this phrase, and we are getting what we deserve. These criminals in Luke 23, they are getting what they deserve. They deserve to die for their deeds. As far as we know, they've never once professed God. They've never once lived right. They've never once tried to make amends. They've never once shown any sign of faith or good to community or neighbors or the church or anyone. The thieves, all they've done is take and hurt and lie and deceive. And make no mistake, they are getting what they deserve. And one of them is just now realizing it. To have the realization that you deserve all the bad that is coming your way. I deserve this. I'm actually getting like, this is just. It's just that I lose my marriage. It's just that I paid the price. It's just I deserved it. He says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And it's, it's like a question, isn't it? Like, like, would you? Could you? Could you even remember me? There's no specifics. He doesn't ask for a time frame. I mean, this is a dire moment, but he's not, no pressure, Jesus. He doesn't ask for a guarantee. It's, it's not like he's bargaining with Jesus because he's, he's in a hopeless place. He realizes, I don't have anything to give. Like, I, I have nothing to bargain with. This is simply a feeble plea from a desperate man who's just realized that everything he's getting, he deserves it. And he looks to God and he says, Would you just remember me? If you could. Have you ever felt that way with God? Have you ever felt like you couldn't pray? Shouldn't be in church? And Jesus' response. Oh, it's the most powerful. It's the most powerful statement in the scripture. From the cross. The place of total defeat. Everyone else is like, this man is moments from death. But he's not. These moments from completing the greatest act, sacrifice that's ever taken place. You say, how do bad things turn to good? I don't know, maybe the death of God, the worst thing in history, resulting in the greatest thing in history. Here's Jesus from the point 
of total loss turns to this, this malefactor. He says, today. Not, not when you work things out. Not when you go to church a few times, not when you get in a city group, or once you've read your Bible, or you can quote you know, Psalms 23, or you've asked everyone to forgive you. Or Today, you'll be with me in paradise.